you roll up to a cardiac arrest. The patient is in VF. You shock, CPR starts, you sort the airway and get things going. Next rhythm check, still VF. Second shock goes in. Next check, now it's a systole. Then, a few minutes later, VF. So, here is the million dollar question. Is this the third round of VF and you drop some amiodarone now? Or, the old saying, new rhythm, new patient, and that's the shock number one. To amiodarone or not to amiodarone when shocks are intermittent? This is the question. My name is Alex Hepner and this is Group Call. Sir, stay calm. This rhythm swing from shockable to non-shockable and back happens quite often in real life situations, especially in hypothermic and uh, patients with crazy electrolyte imbalances. So yeah, you may find yourself starting down this scenario one day. For years, and I mean years of my career, I lived by this rule. New rhythm, new patient. That's how I was trained 15 years ago. It made sense back then, but I was wrong. Dead wrong. You're supposed to give amiodarone after the third shock regardless. If those shocks are back to back or split up, by a non-shockable rhythm. How do I know that? These are the most important ALS guidelines from around the world. American Heart Association, Australian and New Zealand Committee on Resuscitation, European Resuscitation Council, and of course, British JR Calc. Now, out of those four, only JR Calc actually mentions whenever the three shocks should be consecutive or intermittent. It literally spells it out, saying give amiodarone 300 mg IV IO after three shocks for VF, PVT, irrespective of whether these are sequential or intermittent shockable rhythms. The others? They all just say give amiodarone after three shocks. It's vague. Super vague. So let's look at the signs that actually build modern ALS protocols. The use of amiodarone in cardiac arrest is based on three big studies. Arrest, from 1999, Alive, 2002, and Rock Alps, 2016. None of those studies compared consecutive versus spaced out shocks. But, and this is cool, the Rock Alps study had one really interesting paragraph. It talks about the physiology, and let me demonstrate it on this scientifically sophisticated model. This is your heart's conduction system. Signal starts at the SA node, travels to AV node, down to the bundle of his and through the Purkinje fibers. Beep after beep, impulse after impulse. But in VF, total chaos. So we give amiodarone, a broad-spectrum antiarrhythmic. It blocks sodium, potassium and calcium channels. That slows the impulses down. That's how it slows erratic VF into something more manageable. Now here's the kicker straight from Rock Alps. Delays in administering amiodarone may reduce its effectiveness, especially as patients enter the metabolic phase of cardiac arrest, when cellular damage becomes irreversible. Translation, if you are doing that new rhythm, new patient thing, when each non-shockable rhythm resets VF count, by the time you give it, the body is already past the point of return. Drugs in, but the moment is gone. So this whole new rhythm, new patient logic sounds tidy, but it's not. It's risky and it might be dangerous. If you are into quick chats about pharmacology, this video is for you. My name is Alex Hepner and this was Group Call.